you, can, you agree with me, if you go to the town here in Arusha, if you ask for the broiler and you ask for the local chicken, the price would be twice as much. So they're still fetching the premium price in the urban markets. So that contribution is realized. But also because of the lack of essential inputs in the rural areas to support intensive port production, so the village poultry becomes a, a, a very important. So they are small in size, they're small in weight, but at least they have the big contribution to the lives of, peop of these people in the, these areas. So uh, uh, another advantage is that they don't have a, a direct competition with the commercial poultry. Uh, they have exception tests where most of the people like to have it. So the village poultry production is, is very efficient in the following ways. We have the low input in terms of labor and capital. So you're just closing them during night and during morning, you leave them scavenging, then come back then uh, afternoon. And then they don't compete much with the human, but also smart and, uh, and agile. They can escape predators compared to the uh, commercial ones. And then they go broody for uh, stock replacement. Healthcare is normally traditional. So we have so many plants people are using to cure the chicken. And then they have very high uh, benefits cost ratio as compared to the other ones. So the village uh, poultry provide pet cash, as I have mentioned earlier, in the poverty uh, elevation. They have high quality protein and micronutrients, and this is very important for the growth of the children and the uh, physiological status of the mothers, breastfeeding and the pregnant ones. And then they also control the pest. You can see the chicken is socializing with the cattle there, picking some insects from the nose. And then you have the manure for vegetable gardens. But also they serve the social credit, ceremonies and rituals, disputes, uh, sometimes the taboos, the witchcrafts, they use chicken most of the time. So these this are very important. But also the assets for women and children. So in most of the developing countries, the chicken is taken as the livestock or the, uh, the women livestock. So most of them, they own it and they, they have a big contribution in taking care of their house, house issues. So the bullet number two, the sustainable poultry husbandry and management. We see how uh, to make it sustainably should be improved. So how do we improve these ones? So we have the interventions, which must be cost efficient. So whatever intervention you think to bring to rural areas should be uh, cost efficient because everyone knows that they don't have a very good uh, purchasing power because of the environment they are living. And then they, have, they, they, they don't have much opportunities to make money. So these are mainly the basic inputs or the things which we can intervene. So we have management, disease control, the feeding, uh, shelter marketing, the group formations. But also whenever you do the intervention, you should think also those interventions should complement with other farm activities, especially when you, do, you go during the cropping seasons. So in improving the health, we have the control of the Newcastle disease. You can see the mother is vaccinating chicken there with the assist, uh, an assistance from the daughter. So probably I will chip in later with the other, other presentation to the details of Newcastle disease control in the project areas we are doing. So probably I'm taking this day as a general representation from the robin. And then we also need the poultry to provide the nutritious food across the seasonal in agricultural resource limiting situations. So as you can see from the graph, the red line indicating the chickens number without Newcastle disease control. So you can see we have the number, large number of chickens during the uh, harvest season, mainly from May to July. But when the onset of Newcastle disease in the most of the areas of Tanzania is from September. So from that time you see those flocks which are not vaccinated against Newcastle disease start coming down. Then all the way up to wet season again. Probably most of them will be dying and purchasing the new ones and those who survive so they started producing again. So the graphs coming up later on. And then we can even see the cereal availability which is go hand in hand with the number of chickens. So at the time where we have uh, more harvest and more 
uh, cereal byproducts is where also we have more uh, nutrients for the chicken and we have a big uh, number of chicken. But for the households who are vaccinating against Newcastle disease, you can see the number of chicken is almost less or more similar constant across all seasons of the, of, of the year. So, and this is the importance of, of you know, vaccinating against Newcastle disease. Now, the family poultry and the nutrition. Uh, probably I can take you through. If my colleague would be interested to chip in somewhere, she's a nutritionist, so she can have a big contribution to this one. She was also part of the project. Uh, mainly in this uh, bullet, we want to show the importance of chicken and poultry. I mean chicken uh, and products to the nutrition of the mother and the, and the children mainly. We are focusing the mother and the children because they are the most vulnerable groups in the, in the places they are, they, are, they are living. So mainly we provide the high quality protein from the poultry, high quality protein from eggs, micronutrients from the eggs, and all that if they are in balanced quantity and quality, you, we say that uh, sanitation health and and care are following a healthy and active life. So if all these are in balances, uh, we have a, a very healthy children, uh, as we can see in the picture. So, but all these uh, we have spoken about, they are, they are being uh, done in the villages by women most of the times, are the ones who are having that space of taking care of the children. And they have so many challenges in, in doing so. So uh, most of the problems we are facing in these uh, rural areas where the projects have been conducted, these mamas, they don't have information on, on the breastfeeding, the pregnant woman, and all that, even feeding the children. So uh, by having this kind of the picture and education materials, they're trying to help them to understand uh, better how to, to feed. So you can see this is uh, the group of um, food groups in Tanzania. We mainly have the five groups. We have the main group, which is carbs or inage, source of inage. Then we have the protein, mainly from the animal source. And then we have the fruits, vegetables, and we have the high yielding inage, uh, sugar, coconut, and, uh, and honey. But, uh, the, but also they have another challenge of the environment. As you can see, this is the central Tanzania, and this is uh, Manioni district and in Papua where the project has been conducted and uh, you can see when the processing of the local vegetables this is famous known as chipali you see the interaction between the cooking pots and the chicken so it might cause the diarrhea to the children cross infection of bacteria from the chicken especially salmonella to the to the child so this is the challenges they're also facing the sanitation Tackling the most critical period, we are saying 1,000 days plus. Ikunda, can you chip in on this? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah? It's <laughs> <Is> enough? <laughs> <laughs> no, can I give you this? Right? Yeah. You want to be head in the system there. And hold but this one. Just, just stay yeah, here. Yeah, I'm leaving here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ikunda. Um, I'm post from this uh, project. I did part of the project during my master's. Uh, so I was not like well involved in the project, just part and was uh, main focus on nutrition aspect of the project. So I'll just go straight to this one. So they say a hundred, uh, a thousand days window of opportunities. That they are critical. Nutritionists will preach a lot about that. They could just take in a week talking about it. But um, they say uh, if you miss this uh, a thousand days of, uh, I say window of opportunities, uh, we have a long term effect when the baby is born. So we are focus, more focus is being put in these days because um, during, uh, during conception, those two and eight, uh, 2080 days, uh, nine months, a mother 
uh, require a more nutritious food to sustain the baby in the womb. And after birth, we say the babe uh, need a proper uh, diet, a proper care, so he can, because they are, they, they are, they are more vulnerable. So we need to uh, be serious on those uh, seven and, 720 days when the baby is born. Um, another thing why this uh, is more important, it's because when a mother is pregnant and after birth also, the nutritional requirement is different when uh, he's not in that condition. For example, if you miss folate during pregnancy, the baby will have a long-term effect after birth. And when the baby is born, for example, if he missed those six months of uh, exclusive breast feeding, the baby will not have uh, uh, the proper growth, those milestone, uh, milestone uh, in growth. So uh, with that, that's why we more focus on these uh, thousand days of, uh, we say, window of opportunities. I think. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so all that he, she has been spoken is reflecting to uh, this kind of the nutrients. So the eggs, you can see the mama is picking the eggs. So they're easy to prepare, they're small but dense packed with nutrients inside. Contains high energy and protein. And then this uh, what she was trying to explain, the micronutrients, the animal source food contribution to the importance, uh, to the nutrients of the children, the mother, especially the, the high iron, which also facilitates the absorption of the uptake of the non high arm from the plants. Yeah, so we want you to appreciate the contribution of the poultry, especially, or livestock, in the nutritional requirement. You can see you need to have the papaya of 74 gram, the orange of 220, the cooked spinach of 148 uh, gram to meet that requirement of vitamin A. But you, you only need the 90 gram, 90 gram of the fried chicken liver to meet that requirement. So it's, it's heavily packed and it's highly nutritious. Mm -hmm. So this is why we're insisting the family poultry production in, in the rural to, to tackle the problem of food security and, and nutrition in particular, especially with the micronutrients. So it's the same example in the iron. You need 2.5 kg of the spinach to provide 18 milligrams of, of iron. But in the same time, you only need uh, 300 grams of the cooked broven liver to provide the same requirement. So this is, this is the, how importance of the animal source food to the uh, nutrients in the human. So we also have the effective uh, and gender sensitive communication. So we are using with the One Health approach. So we are telling the importance of nutrition and health and everything to both human and to the, to the chicken. So if you give the example of the, maybe the vaccination or polio or pork, whatever, they understand much quicker if that, shifting that example to the, to the livestock. So if you know babies need vaccine, they also animals need vaccine. We need shelter, they also animals need shelter. We need good food, the animals also need good food. So in so doing, the message is, is, is going very, very quickly. So this is among the education materials we have prepared from the project. <coughs> so it eggs for health, strength, and growth. So we have the, the uh, pregnant mother eating the egg. We have the breastfeeding mother. And we have the, the growing one with the father, at least to take care of the issue of gender, to balance the gender. You see? And that's the baby boy. And the, the one with the baby girl. So the gender sensitive issues comes in. Yeah, this is the testimony from one of the project participants called Rosie. Uh, so promoting nutritious health food by decreasing chicken deaths to, due to Newcastle disease 
it's where now we come in quickly. So now I'm using eggs for family if there are a lot, and if there are only a few, I give to the child. So my daughter can take up to two eggs per week, and I have two other chickens and eight small chicks. And all this is attributed to the uh, Newcastle disease control. So somewhere we had uh, in the capacity building, we had a student trying to uh, see the use of eggshells as calcium supplement. So this is also a poster we prepared. So these are the steps for pre preparing uh, until the end of using the eggshells. If you're interested, maybe we share with you later. So as I said, the contribution of the poultry is also lying hand in hand with the sustainable development goals. So we saw number one, poverty, number two, zero hunger, good health and well-being, gender equality, and responsible consumption and production. Thanks very much. So probably I will quickly upload the next presentation, which is uh, focused on the project area. So this one, so this is now reflecting to what has been written in the, in the abstract booklet. So because we have been sent a presentation a bit late, so I had already prepared this one. So this is the one I'm going through. You can see here, these guys are, these guys are trained how to vaccinate in Papua, central Tanzania. So quickly, everyone knows that uh, in developing countries, uh, poultry keeping is practiced by 70 to 99 percent of the people and there's the big role is uh, food security and the only uh, livestock frequently under control of the women with, with all these efforts the consequence is being Newcastle disease so as the one of the interventions in the project we are doing which is called the strengthening food and nutrition security through family poultry and crop integration in Zambia and Tanzania so the main focus the Newcastle vaccination program so this was the model or the methodology we are used in the, this project. So we have the three words you can see from the sketch. The Sansa and Majiri, these two words are in Manyoni district, uh, Manyoni district and in Papua, you have one word called Iwondo. So in this model, we have the so-called community assistants who are assisting, taking the data with the project. And then down we have the community vaccinators who are vaccinating against, uh, chickens against Newcastle disease. And these are trained. And then below, we have the campaigns. Normally, we do it uh, three times a year, every after four months. So uh, these campaigns are also conducted in these areas. And then they're taking the data. So the community vaccination data from the books. So they have the books which are recording who was vaccinated and paid for the vaccination. And then uh, alongside with this uh, intervention, we also have another tool, the questionnaire, the livelihood questionnaire, which is conducted in, in uh, once a year. So after the, all this data we have been analyzed uh, using the R command, uh, TTS and K-square to compare the results before and after. So we have other data from the project. So I said the vaccination, we also have the mother and child health and nutrition. This is the kind of the questionnaire we are trying to do. It's normally done or done every after six months to, to, to evaluate the, the health status of the mother and the child. We had the two, two weekly forms which are collecting the chicken numbers in the project area. And then we had the farming system analysis. This is done once a year, and it's only, it's only once. And then we have the visual data, which is showing the chicken dynamics and the consumption of eggs and chicken in the, in the participants in the project. Uh, so far, we have managed to do some of the preliminary analysis, um, and analysis mainly focused on poultry crop systems integrations nutrition and health. So, so for my side, I will only give you the results on the poultry uh, a bit crop system uh, integrations. So the project had four objectives. So the objective number one was uh, to have a look on the health of the children, mother and the children. We also another objective, local capacity building. So you see the Yukunda is the beneficiary from the project was doing the masters. We had the other three doing the PhDs in this project. And then uh, we also had the marketing issues in the project and this is the objective one of the objective integration and efficiency of family poultry cropping system so these are some of the data 
So you see the livestock keeping in these areas. So the project started 2014 up to 18, at mid 18, and finished. So the interest here is chicken. As you can see from time to time, the household keeping chicken by percentage is keeping increasing. So from the baseline for both uh, wards, you see 50.4, 16.7, uh, 49.3, and Iwondo 47.3. But at the end of it, we have the very high percentages. This is showing that people there they have been adopted and accepting the chicken is a very important uh, asset in the in the community. So we had so many reasons for people not keeping chickens. So, but the predominant reason was the Newcastle disease. So they say died from disease, and this disease was mainly the Newcastle disease. And we realized this one after doing the PRI. So we came up with those findings. But nowadays, the Newcastle disease is no longer a problem. So we have other problems associated with the chicken. We have the swelling of the eyes. You have the vitamin A, which is causing the, the blindness. As I said previously, uh, the chicken ownership, it was tra traditionally an uh, arrangement in Sanda and other areas of the project. Women should be the ones to initiate the, and purchase chicken. So also men's uh, ideas about chicken showed that they were generally consenting to chicken being associated more with women than uh, themselves because of their traditional values. So this was uh, a quote from one of the students who was doing a um, master's in this project also. So as you can see from the figures, the chicken ownership in the household, it, previously we had uh, more male owning chicken, but with time there's a shift. The more chickens are being owned by family members and the women more owning male chicken. So this is showing the appreciation of the, of the chicken in the, in the family, their contribution in the, in the family. So uh, now the vaccination against Newcastle disease. So before we vaccinate, we did the uh, trial to assess the board title of the chickens before the vaccination. And this was very important to, uh, to know if the vaccine was efficient and effective, and also if the vaccinator is doing the job properly. So these are uh, the geometric mean title of the chickens from all villages where the project has been conducted. So every ward has uh, one village, and every village has four communities, so four villages. So we can see the mean title before vaccination, it was a bit down, and the the metric mean data after vaccination, it, see, it shows that the, the chicken has been uh, with the antibodies or already uh, with the uh, immunity uh, before the, the vaccination. So this was a, a, a good thing with the vaccine. And it is the thermos type of vaccine which is produced in the place where I'm working. It's called the I2 vaccine. So we managed to do uh, vaccination campaigns in these project areas. So 14 in Sanza and 11 in Majiri and 9 in Wondo. So the two were lagging behind because the interventions came a bit late and the other one, the one started the interventions. So the tables are showing those uh, months and everything. And then the number of chickens vaccinated. So generally, uh, the observations or the data show that while the number of all households in the world vaccinating has been going down because of several reasons, but at least the number of chicken vaccinated is, is increasing. And this is showing that they, they appreciate the vaccine and it is helping them to maintain their flocks. But the, the most important success story is that the average number of chickens uh, has been increasing from time to time. So if someone started with a few number of chickens after vaccination, so the number of chickens is going up. And so it, it, it has now the very stable, uh, very stable, the flock structure. We have all classes, the growers, the chicks, and, and the adults. And this is the, the attribution of the Newcastle Disease uh, Control Program. So this is significant increase in road household keeping chickens, as I have shown in the uh, previous graph. It is very significant. And this is the attribute to the Newcastle Disease Control Program. And also there is significant increase of the chicken flock size and structure in these project areas. So they're also feeding the chickens, so, and these are the main, mainly type, uh, main uh, feeds they're giving to the chickens. Sorghum, maize or maize brine, leftovers, the vegetable scraps and finger millets. And this is also, uh, has been contributed to the crop interventions. So alongside with this project, we, have, we had four interventions. The Newcastle disease, the health and nutrition, we had the crop interventions at the same, at the same time. Uh, 
So the crops we are obtaining, they are also helping to feed, to feed the chickens. So the overnight uh, chicken housing, during the baseline, most of the people were sleeping the chickens inside. And it's because it was a, a very small number, they could afford, they're just uh, below the bed, they're sleeping with them. But with time, <laughs> interesting, but with time, because of the increasing flock size, you cannot sleep with the chicken inside anymore. So if the people started building their chicken house outside or another, another, another room inside the house, so the chicken were kept that way. But also we are trying to educate them on the other pathogens could be passing from the chickens to, uh, uh, to human, especially uh, ectoparasites, which are very stubborn. So the spillover effects uh, in, in nearby uh, wards where the project has been conducted, we have also other four uh, wards that have adopted the model. So they're also vaccinating against a Newcastle disease virus and they're also selling a big number of chicken. And this is, uh, there is only one difference that they're vaccinating every month. They're believing that every month uh, there is a new flock coming out. But with the project, we only do three times, three times uh, a year, which is giving the maximum protection against Newcastle disease virus. So challenges, we have the weather calamities in these areas. Very low uh, rainfall, it's semi-arid area, and it is across to the Lift Valley. So it's received the annual rainfall of minimum of 600 millimeter, and the only 35 days to 40 days per year. So we have other poultry diseases, uh, now bring a lot of discussions in the communities. So we have students who are doing the PhD investigating those diseases. And then we have issue of the sustainability of the vaccination activities. So we have inefficient vaccinators, we have the dropouts of vaccinators, payment of, for vaccination services, farmers are not paying because it's, they have to contribute a small amount for, for the vial. It is 50 shillings to 100. So some they're not paying, but some they don't want to vaccinate their chickens with no reasons. And then so it comes the difficult of maintaining the funds for the buying other vaccines. So conclusions and way forward. So during the baseline survey, Newcastle disease was reported to be the predominant reason for the people not keeping chicken, but nowadays it's no longer report, reported the problem. And then we have significant increase of number of chickens raised by the household. And this is the attributed by Newcastle disease control program. And then we have the training of the community assistants who are willing to do vaccination. And then this is very promising if the local government authorities, they can uptake and they adopt the model and supporting the, the, the program. Thanks very much for listening. I would like to acknowledge the partners in this project. Government of Tanzania, Coast Tech, University of Agriculture, Sydney, and this councils. Thanks for listening.